got a letter from Sister Laura Rubin, and she is the one that keeps us in contact a lot with Brother and Sister Oka. Although, uh, Brother Oka sent Christmas greetings by the uh, internet, and uh, we, he and Pastor Ford uh, conversed a little bit by that way. And uh, so it's, it's good to know that they are doing better. God is really working on that. They're, they too, like us, have been going through this sickness and all kinds of things. But Sister Moore uh, wrote this letter and it just, it gave me Jesus bumps and I wanted to share with you. It's a secret. Okay. Yesterday morning, I woke a little early and maintained in bed, remained in bed, praying in the Spirit. In a short time, it seemed as if someone passed quickly by my door. And I thought to myself that perhaps my dad was up very early, unable to sleep. Hmm. A bit after that, there was suddenly a loud crackling electric noise for one second. Strange. But the dog hadn't come running into me. And I had a peace about it, so I just stayed in bed. I heard the very quiet sound like an inside door closing. Mm. Then very low music from far away started. So I decided that I should get up and investigate. My mother is not too proficient with the music things. My dad does not usually turn them on. And I was quite perplexed. Was it an angel visiting our house? I went into the family room where the music was coming from and looked around to see if it was an angel sitting there enjoying the music, Christmas music. After all, there have been such reports from credible people even in recent uh, past. I didn't see an angel, so I sat down on the couch, still perplexed, listening to the last of the CD, the disc then changed over to a CD by Dr. Rodney Howard Brown of some years ago of songs praising Jesus, Jesus and declaring his lordship over the earth. Mother came in and just as that CD started and we worshiped throughout the whole CD. The presence of the Lord was very great with us there. She then told me that the clocks were off, some kind of power. I would say power. That surge had occurred at 8.09. She knew the time because she had just looked at her bedside clock at the moment it flashed off. Then came right back on. But every other clock had gone off, we found. I found later in a call to a neighbor that no one else had experienced any power surge. I had an eye infection start over the weekend and had managed to get an appointment with the doctor very quickly for that afternoon. I was very, very happy in my spirit, joyfully, laughingly, and jokingly with people I didn't even know. And if you know Laura, that's very uncharacteristic of her because she's very quiet. I did it just brimming over with joy. My mother says the Holy Spirit was excited about what had, was about to happen. When I did see the doctor, I started telling him about the events earlier in the day, about the Noah happening to these last three years since Brother Ed's graduation to heaven. That was her husband. Then out of the blue, he said he wanted to help me with my eyelid situation of those of these last almost 20 years. And I said, oh, thank you so much, but who's going to do that? And he said, me, I do it. I, and went to get gold weights to see which would be best to put in the upper eyelid. It hasn't shut properly in these many years. I have taped it shut every night in all these years to avoid drying out the cornea more. There will be some additional work done too for the lower eyelid. I'll go back and see him in a week or two so he can check to make sure the eye infection is gone and then surgery. Our God is so good. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Sister Laura, I have shared in here that she almost lost her father 
and uh, her mom's not been well either. So, uh, you know, God, God has just taken care of his people very, very good. Uh, in our theme, I have a letter from Sister Jenna Scott, and she says, Some secrets are meant to be shared, especially when they are this good. Talking about the 12-month planner that we have. Someone once said that secrets aren't secrets, they're just hidden treasures waiting to be exploited. As a little girl, I remember my two best friends were sisters, and we played great together most of the time, but at some point we would have a difference of opinion on something, and all of a sudden, I was the outsider. They would begin to whisper to each other, and I had no idea what they were talking about. I just knew I wasn't privy to the conversation. I really hated that. On the other hand, there is a special bond between two people that share a secret, a bond of trust. Family therapist Ian Black, professor and author of The Secret Life of Families, said there are two types of secrets. Essential secrets promote normal growth and development. Toxic secrets cause psychological damage and allow decisions to be based on missing information. Secrets need to be shared. If you are bearing the pain of a toxic secret, you need to find someone with whom you can share that pain and allow the Holy Spirit to heal the wounds of the past. There are also secrets that are essential to and must be shared with someone special in your life, such as the secret family recipe, beauty secrets, and secret surprises. At the right time, of course, don't reveal the prize, surprise too soon. There are some amazing secrets held within the pages of God's Word that we must seek out and share with others. In Matthew 13, 11, Jesus said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. These are essential secrets that Jesus said have been given to us. We, his children, God intends for these secrets to help us. Some secrets are meant to be shared, especially when they are this good. Hallelujah. These are some of the things that are going to... Endless love, give me love, bombshell temptations, sexy little things, dream angels, bombshell seductions, desires, vertical, gorgeous, incredible daring, wings, and rapture. And these are all perfumes of Victoria's Secret. And I didn't know that, but... But anyway, but these are some of the secrets that we're going to be sharing with Victoria's secrets. Hallelujah. And this morning, if you'll turn again with me, we're starting out with Matthew 13, 11. We're talking about endless love. Hallelujah. Of course, I've just read Matthew uh, 13, 11. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. The people on the outside world does not know the hidden things that Jesus has or the openness even of Jesus. In Psalms 107, and uh, it's, writ it's written differently in the King James, and they have got uh, this in the New International Version. But Psalms 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good and His mercy. For his love endures forever. 
regardless of what we go through, regardless of what happens around about us, God's love for us, Jesus' love for us, never, never goes away. We can be the armest rascal on the face of the earth, and He still loves us. And we need to realize how important that endless love is in our capacity of life. Endless. The word endless is an adjective. Having or seeming to have no end, no limit. Endless. First you have to have an understanding of measurement. The importance for the importance of endless. Time is endless. I shared with one of our foster children when we had foster kids that she hated math. And I said, Nancy, you need to learn math. Because even being a mother, and what she desired to be a mother, and I said, a mother has to know math because you have to know how to do a baby's formula. And you use math to do that. Something that, in, that sparked her interest other than just numbers, but to measure things. You have to know the and the measurements of baking a cake. Could you imagine if a cake called for baking powder and you thought, oh, I don't have any, I'll put baking soda in it. <laughs> it won't work. Last night, I was reading my recipe and I had overlooked it for that figgy pudding. It called for buttermilk. You cannot not use buttermilk because the buttermilk is what activates the baking powder and the baking soda. Just regular milk wouldn't work. So I had to take a trip to County Market and buy buttermilk so that it would raise right. Measurements are important. Things that sometimes we don't really think about. Time, we don't think about time being endless. It was there, it's going to be there. The, the earth to the atmosphere. Oh my goodness. You know, to some of the planets it's forever and ever. But there is places out beyond the planets that we cannot reach. It is an endless distance. And that's how God's love is to us. You cannot put it in a little box. You can't put it in a big box. Because it's unmeasurable. It's just unmeasurable. It's endless, the love that he has for us. In 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the last verse of that says, And now abides faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. You can have all the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit and have not love. <laughs> the Bible tells us we just become as an aggravation, a tinkling brass, like fingernails going down on a chalkboard. If you do not have the love of Christ, that's how we are. I want to be infectious, not irritating. And sometimes I am very irritating. But I want to be infectious to the fact that people around me get hungry for what I have. I want to have so much of Jesus in me that it just is there and nobody can, can pass it. They have to say, ooh, what's different? We ministered one time in a, in a church, different denomination than ours. And when we were finished with the service, we had people come up and say, there's something different about you. What do you have? Oh, well, you know, let me share with you. It's called the Holy Spirit. That's what we have that's so different. The love of Jesus. And we can share that with, with those around about you. And sometimes just a hug, a smile, or just a, a, a soft touch will let people know that you have love in your heart. Hallelujah. God's love is endless. It doesn't have a face. It does, you can't say, well, this is love or this is love, because it's, 
you, you just can't do that. There are so many ways to show love that it's hard to describe what love is. We used to sing a song back in the 70s. Love is something you do, not always something you can feel, but it's real. And that's how it is. It's not always something that, that you know exactly what's going on, but love is there. And the love of Christ never, 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 never goes away. Right. When I was in the hospital in 1986 when I broke my neck, and I had this thing drilled in my skull and I couldn't move my head side to side and I just had to lay there and look up. And all of a sudden, Jesus was laying over the top of me. And he says, I promised you I would never leave you or forsake you. And here I am. And that has been a promise that, that has stuck with me all of these years. That regardless of what went on in my life, Brother and Sister Smith came out to see me and they said that they didn't recognize me. My face was so big and I was so swollen. But Jesus protected me. I got to be a witness to a lot of people in that hospital. I had a little nun that came in and she said, Oh, sis, I came in to, to encourage you. But she says, I am leaving encouraged and blessed. She said, this has been a great experience for me. While I was there, I experienced anxiety, which I had never, ever, ever, ever had experienced. But now I can deal with that. When someone else has that, I know how to deal with that anxiety. It's a rough, rough thing to do. I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't turn over or anything, and they would, they measured me for a canvas thing. I was on what they called a striker bed, and they would flip me over. They would lay me on my, uh, well, I'd be on my back, and they would put this piece of canvas over the top of me, and they had a uh, bolt on each end that they would tighten down, and then they would count three, and they'd flip me over. And I had a face cut out like this, just for my face, to go down. And they would roll me over, and the first time they did that, I got on my light real fast, and I said, come back in and flip me back over. I can't stand this. I was the only conscious patient that they'd had in that hospital on the striker bed because most everybody, well, everybody else that had been on it was unconscious. So they really didn't know how people really would react. But it felt like my whole inside was coming out through my face. And so they turned me back over, and I laid there for a few minutes, and I hit my button again, and I said, okay, you can come back in. and and we'll try it again. Then I was able to stay for two hours. And then flip me back over and they did this all day. And then at night about 8, 8.30, they would put me on my back and they would leave me like that all night long. But the love of Christ never, never left me. When I was going through that anxiety, I told the nurse, I said, you flip me over, put me on my stomach, Put my Bible down in front of me at Psalms 91 and me and the Lord is going to take care of this situation. Yes. And so she said, okay. So she left my room and I stayed there and I read the word and I prayed and I said, this is enough. I said, I don't know what's going on, but Lord, you are my father and you are my guide and you're going to have to take care of this for me. And within 20 minutes, I was fine. I rang my buzzer. I said, okay, you come back and flip me over. I'm doing good. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the one, you know, God helped me with that. But why? So that I could help others that are going through that. Because I would not know how to help them had I not experienced that. Turn with me to Hebrews 13.5. That's right after Corinthians. I can hear it. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. Hebrews 13 and verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content in such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just what he had told me. He's promised that. 
And God keeps his promises. Hallelujah. First Peter 4 8. <clears throat> And above all things, have fervent love one for another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Where there's love, <coughs> there is forgiveness. And that love of Christ, that endless love, will help you. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 John 4 8.
I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. He paid the debt that I owed and I could not pay. I now receive payment for that debt through His blood and His sacrifice on Calvary. I bury my sin at the foot of the cross, never to be revived again. And I believe